The history of Glasgow is really the story of four different cities. There's the modern city we have today, before that was the great industrial Victorian city of the 19th century. Before that was the city that grew up in the 17th and 18th centuries, the one built by the great merchants like the Tobacco Lords, which Daniel Defoe called the beautifulest in the country. But even before that was the original city, the medieval one, which dates back almost a thousand years. The city that stretched from the cathedral on the hill down the high street to the commercial hub at Glasgow Cross. Very little of that has survived beyond the cathedral itself but there are some old ghosts of that medieval town which have survived to the present day. The bridge was the only one in the city for centuries and the only other way to cross the river was by fording it at low tide. On the south bank were the lands of Little Govan, also called Gorbals. It was outside the city, so that was where they decided it was safe to build the leper hospital. So anyone traveling from the south had to use the bridge to enter the city. And when they crossed to the north bank, they couldn't just walk in, no. Nope. They had to pass through a control point, a Glaswegian checkpoint Charlie. They had to get through the bridge gate. So what did this gate look like? Well, luckily enough, we do have a drawing of it. The only one of any of Glasgow's great gates that we actually have. Captain John Slezer's illustration of Glasgow from the south bank of the Clyde was made in the late 1600s and shows the old bridge being crossed by pedestrians, horse riders and a quite posh carriage. And clearly, at the north end of the bridge, a large, crenellated, toothed wall pierced with an arched gateway, the gateway to Glasgow. They were obviously meant to look like the front of a castle, solid, imposing, not to be messed with. The gates themselves were made of solid oak with iron studs rammed into them. It's said that when they opened, that they, they creaked harshly on their hinges. There's been a bridge on this site for maybe at least a thousand years, but it wasn't very big, only about four metres wide, which is about the size of this pavement. It lasted until the 1850s when this bridge was built and replaced it. Once they let you through the gate, you had a choice. You could head north up Stockwell Gate that took you to the Tron Gate, or you could turn right into the street which took its name from the Great Port itself, the Bridge Gate. Walking down the Bridge Gate today, it looks largely like what it is, a, a forgotten and neglected side street but it's actually not only one of Glasgow's oldest streets, it was actually one of the poshest as well. 400 years ago, it was lined with the mansions and apartments of the great and the good, and the very, very rich. So posh was it indeed that this is where the Merchant's House decided to build their great hall in 1659. It was famous for its cuisine as well. People came from all over the country to sample its tripe, potted meat and cow heel, usually washed down with something called Glasgow punch, which to be quite honest, was mainly whiskey. In fact, fortunes were made here of the fabulous combination of tripe and whiskey. And so this is how one of Glasgow's oldest and most important historical areas stands today. A mere shadow of its glorious medieval past. No great gate, no merchant's hall, not even Paddy's Market. You have to say, it really does deserve better.